Hi everyone. We're here today with a project that we have entitled Waiting on a Ring. And you can see pretty much by the drawing why we have named it that because it kind of looks like the double wedding ring. So we're going to be using two new templates to me. You may have already used them, but they're on the list there. And if you haven't downloaded the handout, you'll want to download that so that you have the um, information that you're going to need. Now I'm going to start by telling you everybody is going to learn something today. But if you're brand new to this, this is going to be a little bit of an advanced project. So don't get frustrated. We're not handing out a complete handout because this is actually going to be a class in the university. So you're going to see the, the way we design it. You're going to see the way we have developed the, the concept here. And if you want to actually take it in a class with me, it will be in the university. So without further ado on the handout, I will tell you, let me go around there. You can see the design here. This finishes up about 30 by 30. And here is the handout. And up here at the top, just like last week, there's an add to cart. So the items that we're showing here, you can actually add to your cart right from that link. And so it makes it very easy to purchase the templates. We're using the corner mark circle 12 and 10 templates. And I'll be showing you those in a minute. And we're using the spinning wheels 36 from sampler set one. Now the way we designed this is we use those templates with the circles or this, um, help me, stitching line yeah. disc to begin with. And so that is how we developed this. And Megan's the one that designed it. And so she's going to be helping me with this today. So let me show you the templates now. I'm going to move this out of the way so that you can see the templates. This is one of the templates, or these are both of the templates. And whether you've seen these before or not, I ordered them because I thought they looked very interesting. They do come as a set, and you'll notice that it's called Circle 10 and Circle 12. So these are the two that we're going to be using. On the circle 12, we are going to use the line that is right next to the edge. And then we are going to skip the second salt to the second, and then we're going to the third solid line end. So that's why I have the two. And you'll want them different colors for what we're doing. Right. You'll want to label those different colors. And that's on the circle 12. And then on the circle 10, the line that we're going to be using is the one, two, three, four, fifth line in. And you want to put the blue where you put the blue on the other one, or at least the same color. So the first line in and the third line in, and on this one, it's the fifth line in. All right, so how are we going to get started with this? Well, what we've done is these are our layers, because I said this was going to be template quilting. So this is a 26 inch piece of fabric that we have drawn four 12 inch squares on. Before you take the time to draw those, you are going to first want to spray the front with your spray starch or your best press or your starch savvy. Two times. Two times. Then you are going to put your fusible heat and bond light. You can see it right here. It takes two pieces because this is only 17 inches by 24 and this down here will be 7 by 24 and we are going to be peeling this off after we have marked these lines on the front. So you would then turn it back. 
The reason you don't mark them first is when you fuse your heat and bond, it's going to take the lines away. So you wait and mark it after you put the heat and bond on. And you told them to not cross those the heat and bonds over, right? They have to match right. up. Don't, don't You're going to match these up, but don't overlap them. So I'm going to peel this off now. And I just have to remind myself, no more pressing. So you can see the shine there. And we're going to lay this one aside. This is our next layer because we are doing template quilting. And on this one, I know where we're cutting it out. It's going to be cut out where these colored spaces are. In other words, the color here is a blue, green, or a teal. So I didn't want to put all of that fusible on a whole back of it. So I have in the instructions given you information, well it will be in the, the class instructions, as to where to put these pieces. So those are the only spaces that are going to get cut out and we have already marked it, we've measured it, and we've put that on there. So while I'm getting this ready, Megan's going to be pressing this in just a second. So we did have a question about the spray starch. How wet do you use it for your, um, do you make You're it really it wet? You mister or you use it, um, the, the starch savvy works fine from the bottle that it comes in, but you want to make sure you get good coverage. That's why you use the mister, okay? So not soaking wet. Not soaking wet. One layer, nice and then another layer and then press it dry. Don't use your steam iron because you're defeating the purpose. You're just gonna use a dry iron. And this one is gonna have two colors that cut away. So this is our last layer of peaker fabric and it does not need any fusible on it at all because the layer above it will expose this and be fused to it. And underneath that, I have put a piece of fleece I like to use fusible on this. If you want to use fusible batting, you can. I like to use fusible fleece because it gives it some substance. And that piece there is 24 inches because that's the way I'm going to be. Well, actually, it's 26 because I'm going to be putting um, uh, borders on this. And that's why this has a lot of extra left on it. So to get this back lined up, this is my peaker fabric which is layer, what are we calling it? Layer peaker fabric number two, right? Right. And this is going to be the one that I have fused those pieces on. It's going to lay on top of that. And I'm going to go iron that in a moment. Right. And then this is going to lay right on top of this. And so those pieces now, once we get them all layered, there's no pressing because we don't want to do any damage to or defeat what we're planning to do. So I'm gonna lay this back. Megan's gonna put the camera in place and we're gonna get started. So you wanna tell them why you called it that, Megan? Well, I called it that because it is a double wedding ring or a take on one. And well, I'm not married yet, so I'm still waiting on my ring, which is why it's called waiting on a ring. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to look and see if they've got any questions. Send us your questions if you got. I don't think I've got any yet that I haven't already answered. I'm going to put the directions here again. Um, where can they find the directions again? They can find it on Westerly by Me website or Facebook site. You can find it on the Sew Steady site. I'll post it here in this feed in just a moment. And they can find it on your website as or your sofas, um, Facebook, as well as all things quilting and sewing with Donnell. So those are four places you can get it. And we highly recommend you do that because you might want to take some notes. 
So they might want to watch here because I've got to peel these pieces all back. <laughs> Bonnie said she likes the name and hope it's soon. I do too, Bonnie. I really do. Uh, the finished product again. I'm going to show you the picture because it's easier because it's smaller. So that's what, um, Billy Jean, that's what it's going to look like. So this is one of those projects that we set down, actually Megan set down with templates and did on paper. And then we pretty much worked backwards to figure out where all of these pieces needed to be. So on here, you can see, I'll just kind of turn this. You can see where my heat and bond is. It's where all those white pieces were. And so, I'm having fun here today. I'm just throwing all that paper on the floor. The cats are gonna love it. Say, we're kind of doing what um, Eleanor, Burns. Eleanor Burns would do, just throwing the strips on the floor. So if you hear crinkling throughout the thing, it's just all the heat and bond on the floor. So you'll have to trust me. I've got it all layered up. And since I can't press anything, and really that wouldn't be of any advantage anyway, I'm going to use some pens. I'm going to... Here we go. Well, happy birthday to some of you. You're telling us it's your birthday. We're glad you're spending it with us. Gosh. I feel kind of special. If I had my if I had my voice tuned up, I'd just go ahead and sing a little bit. But no, you don't want to hear that. So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting some pens in through all of these layers to hold it in place because we've got like five layers here. Now this is going to be one that we definitely want to check the height of our foot. I'm going to let you reach that one, Megan. All so right. we had quite the evening last night auditioning our threads to see what thread we might want to use on this. And we came up with this color here. I've already threaded my machine, but I'll pull this down so you can see it. It actually blends really well with the layer underneath, which is gonna be our first layer of peaking fabric. So we think it's gonna look good. Marge wants to know how wide the strips of heat and bond were, and I don't think we even told them. They're two inches wide on the small pieces that we did or that are on that one layer. So the layer that is underneath for these, these pieces here are two by eight inches and the small pieces are two by four inches. And so in the instructions um, that you would actually have with the class, it will tell you exactly where to place those. I'll be talking about, I can tell you right now from the center out to here, you're gonna be in the center of this piece is six inches. So each way is six inches out and then you just put it centered on that spot. And the other one I'll tell you here in just a minute. The, uh, Susan wants to know, is it embroidery thread? That No, this is just regular 40 weight quilting thread. And what are you, they're gonna ask, what are you using in the bobbin? Same thread. Okay. Same thread. So you can see that I've got this so that I've got my center here. Everything's nice and flat. So I'm gonna take these pins out here. And I'm going to get the small template, which I have right here. And this is the small one that says 10. And I am going to be placing that template so that this line which has a square. Megan, you want to get my black backing so I can show them better? So right here, this has a square 
right there. And that's gonna go on the corner where I've got my lines drawn. Remember those were drawn 12 inch squares. I have my stable tape on my template so it's gonna hold it in place and I'm gonna be stitching around that outer edge. And we're gonna start in the center and work our way out, right? Right, well, not the, we're gonna line it up in the center, but we're gonna be starting out here against and on one of those lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this down and I can tell, you can see, this is normal here. I've got to make some adjustments because that's way too close to the fabric. So when I put this down, that's much better. Let's see here if I need to, that probably looks like that's gonna be just fine. And because of the way I'm doing this, I'm gonna hold my foot down, my needle down, bring my needle up, bring my foot up, and I'm gonna go underneath there. Now I'm gonna to need to get, this is where you gotta hold everything in place because I wanna get that same spot and I wanna get my thread for my bobbin. There it is. Marge wants to know when you're gonna have this on the university. Well, it'll probably be about two weeks because I've got several things lined up to get before it, but it'll be right after that. Maybe sooner, it depends on what happens here at the ranch. We got ready to go live tonight, you guys, and the iPad was totally dead. So that's why we were a few minutes late getting something else to work with. And I'm gonna put the handout links in here, but a lot of you have told me that the So Steady one is not working. So I'm gonna put it on here, but I'm gonna put the other three as well. So okay, I, yeah, thank you. So here we go around. And I'm gonna stop right on that line. Now, just because I want you to be able to see me working, I'm gonna rotate my fabric and it's easiest. I think it works better. And I'm gonna put it right up against my template and I'm putting my, you gotta go one more stitch. There we go. And it makes a difference, you guys. You wanna get it so that everything is lined up and I'm gonna come around this way. And because of the way we're doing this and the way this template is, it's not gonna be perfectly round. You're gonna notice it's kind of a little bit pointed. So when you do it, and I think you can see right there how it kind of looks like it's a little pointed, that's because of the template is not, it's rounded, but it's for a different purpose than we're necessarily using it for. But as long as everything works together, that's all that matters. Needle down. I'm gonna turn this. I'm gonna line it up. And this over here, we definitely want that to meet. So if you were in my class right now and we were able to see each other, I would say, okay, someone tell me. And somebody's gonna say, spacing gauge because we've got to have that meet perfectly. Now, I'm right back to where I started, and on our design, there is really nothing else I can do to connect to this. Nothing else can be done as a design or anything, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise my needle, I'm gonna raise my foot, and I'm gonna pull this thread out and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it on the top. I'm going to lift up underneath the bottom and I'm going to cut it there. Now I know that there are many ways to do this and everybody has a different way, but those of you that know me know that I use the cinch side threading needles. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put those neat threads in there. I won't be doing this on every single one tonight so that we can get through this, but on this one, I wanna get it out of my way and I want you to see what I'm doing. Well, that was interesting. I lost all my threads before I went through. So Linda would like to know, could you use the circles on quilts to make this circle? You can. It, it would, it, it would, it's not gonna make the design as we are, have intended it, so it's totally up to you but this is not gonna to meet together the same way. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna take two and two threads, two, it doesn't matter which two, 
Am I still in the screen? Because I kind of moved out of the way. You're at the bottom, but you're good. Okay. So I'm going to tie that in a knot. And I like for my knot to be just a smidge away from where the thread meets the fabric. And if you can, you know, kind of do that, it'll hide easier. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those tails in again. And now that I've got a knot, I'm just going to go right in that spot and bury those threads. And I got tons of layers there. So now all I do is pull that knot and I have buried it. And I just pull it a little tighter and clip that off so that it's, it's now buried underneath there. So that's out of my way. I don't have to worry about it. And like I said, it's not a perfect circle and you probably didn't notice that when I had it on the, um, just the design somewhere but that's the way it's made. Now the next thing that we're going to be doing is we are going to use the large template and we are going to do the pink again, only it's on the large template this time. This will be the first time for the pink. This is the first time, sorry. This is the first time for the pink. Oh, wrong line. The designer here is pointing me out, so telling me which one to do. So what I'm gonna do here, while I've done that back and forth, you guys, I actually unthreaded my needle. So I have to thread my needle again, but thank you, I have a needle threader. If you're buying a new machine, make sure you have a needle threader. Well, what am I doing wrong? I guess I spoke too soon. There we go. My grandma would have said it just wasn't holding my mouth right. So let's get that through. And let me show you a little hint on this. When you put that through there, if you feel like you can't get a hold of it, because I always want to start with it down in there, then what you're going to do is just move your fabric and it will take it to the side. It's so close to the color, I can't see, there we go. All right, same thing, repeat. Line up that, it's got a line this way and a line that way. Oh, here's a great question from Liz. How do you make sure when you bury the threads, when you cut the top layers of the fabric, that the thread tails don't end up in that layer? Well, because I've got fleece and then I've got another layer that's not gonna get cut, I've got plenty of layers to, to be dealing with, but that's a great question. You don't wanna just go you know, completely down deep in it from the wrong side would bring it up to the top. So yeah, that's a great question. Now this time, because I cut my thread previously, it just flossed right up there. So I'm gonna go this full distance this time. needle in the line. We're going to rotate this. Stop in that line. Rotate again. And this is kind of stiff, and that's kind of to your advantage. It really helps to keep it, you know, so you can manage this. Because it stays pretty stiff, but you definitely want to have your stable tape on the back. And you can see I've got one hand on the fabric and one hand on the template. So this is my last one coming around. I want to make sure that nothing underneath gets messed up. And I need to use my spacing gauge. Now, since it's the last one, and this is another reason you need a flat surface because I'm measuring clear out there. You can see that that is way more, oh, excuse me here. Oh. We had notifications come on there. Okay, you can see clear over here 
that that is, is way more than a quarter of an inch, but it's not an option. We've got to get back there. So all we're gonna do is take our spacing gauge, measure it, and move our template. So that just moved this just a little bit, so we'll get right back to where we started. Not gonna be a problem at all, but that's the beauty of the spacing gauge. You don't have to eyeball it. You're gonna be able to get right back to where you started. All right, raise our needle, raise our foot, and I'm gonna do one of the things that a lot of people do, and that is they pull this out, put the needle back down in there, and raise it up again. And when you pull on that, you get your bobbin thread. So I'm gonna pull that bobbin thread out so that it's long enough to tie off, give it a snip, and now I've got my threads, all four, on the top. And now I wouldn't even be afraid to go ahead and tie that knot now and bury it from the top. It would work the same way. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut them off to a manageable length that I can still tie later. And we're gonna go to the next one. And the next thing that I'm going to be doing is from the center, I am going to be using the large template with the blue line. Large template with the blue line. Did it fall off of the back? There it is. They're clear and it's hard to see them, you guys. So let's start down here. So it's in front of us this time. Blue line. Lined up. And we'll be starting right here. So I'm going to start at that point, put my foot down away from my template, back it up to the template, needle down, needle up, foot up, and because I pulled that up and cut it, there's enough floss thread there, so I can just use that just like so. Now, Megan, can you look over the top here so I don't mess up the lines and see that I'm lined up? You are. All right, so now we're gonna go this direction. Some of you can kind of hear that's a little noisier than it normally is. That's because it's going through those layers of the heat and bond. Now we wanna be careful here to make sure we stop right on that line or we're gonna fall off of our template. And that's why that template has that extra space out there is so we can stitch right to that and not fall off. So I'm gonna turn this, we're gonna line up again. And in a perfect world, it wouldn't, can you see it, honey? Yeah, come toward you just a smidge. Yep, um, is good this now. line on? Yes, you're good. All right. So yes, I would be getting up and checking on the back of that. But since I've got a camera here over my head, I'm letting her do my checking. I'm gonna rotate again. Actually, let me just show you this way. Make sure I don't have anything caught and we'll line it up here. Liz wants to know, what are some other uses for the corner mark circle templates, the ones you're using? If you guys look on the, um, the link for the handout, you will see that it's pictured there what other things you can do with these corners. You can start and you can build out from each corner. A lot of different designs can be made with it. This is a little bit more into the designing part of using this template, but you could just use this simply like this and do a corner, move it in, do a corner, move it in. And so you would have cross hatching if you wanted. You could keep doing it so you would have cross hatching there. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Now, I'm gonna rotate this one time because I can't measure my quarter of an inch down here in front of me. So I've gotta get around here 
where I can measure that quarter of an inch. So you can see over there, got it lined up. And this one looks like I may need to move it back just a smidge. Yep. So I have to allow that quarter of an inch All right, again, I'm gonna raise my needle, raise my foot. I'm gonna come away from where I'm at, pull that thread out and come back to that same spot, foot down, needle down, needle up, foot up, and I'm pulling up my bobbin thread. So this thread right here is actually the bobbin thread. And when you cut this, you want to make sure you're cutting the one that you're still pulling. This still pulls here, so I want to cut that one. So then when I move this away, I've got my four threads here, and this one here is ready for the next part of the design. So you'll notice I got threads here from the previous one. I've got threads over here from this one. And they're all not in the same place, which kind of can be a good thing and also can kind of be a bad thing. So what we're going to do now is we are going to look and see what our next direction calls for because we just did the pink and the blue, right, Megan? We did. So now we're going to use the large template in the corners. So the same template. It's the same template we had, and we are going to be alternating with the small template. And this is why I said to make your line, the, the particular ones, those matching colors. Because what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna do this design here. And then when I'm finished with it, I'm gonna use this template and I'm gonna do this design because the needle will be in the correct spot to come this direction. Now, if you don't mind, Megan, I'd like to see the actual template, the design. Can, do, can you lay the pattern, the big pattern out so I can see where it's at? Okay, I wanna make sure I'm doing it right. I've written it down, but I wanna make sure it's correct. So we've got our blue here and we're lined up. And we're gonna start right up here. And even though this appears to be a margin, when we're finished, that's really not a margin. So that's why I'm not going off in that. Some of you may be wondering, I will do an add-on technique, which is kind of a quilt as you go for borders. So if you've never seen that, that's gonna be um, an interesting way to finish this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and lower this, check my alignment and I'm gonna be coming right back around this direction. Now you'll notice I got both hands on the template this time because I can do that. I'm gonna take this straight pin out and this is where I take this small one and look there, everything lines up exactly like it's supposed to and I continue on this direction. Which is funny because when I made this design, I wasn't thinking about that, but it worked out great. And now I'm rotating this and bringing this around. And we're gonna take the pin out of this corner, make sure everything is flat still. And we're gonna line up with the blue line again. All right, so it's just a smidge off. It's not a big deal, because all you're gonna do is match it and stitch. So Karen has a question. Well, that's good because my thread just broke, so go ahead. Okay. Um, she says, would you ever consider having a class in just designing with the Westerly rulers? Because she really needs help with that. Well, we could do that. 
We could devote one of these times, the Saturday nights, to doing something like that. To just give where us, we're drawing. Yeah, just give some, give it, give us some. What some would you thoughts. like to see? What would you like to see, and how would you like to do that? Now, because this is something I'm actually using, you guys, I'm going to be taking these stitches out, and so I need some questions while I'm doing that. I got another one ready. Liz wants to know um, how do you decide if you have a lot of different machines. How do you decide which machine to use for the pattern you are making? Which machine for the pattern? I think because I have a different angle, it looks like we have a different machine, but we're still on the Janome M7. So I think she was confused maybe. I don't, I, I will just tell you, because I get this question, it's a good question. I get the question all the time, not necessarily for the pattern, but the question usually is, how do I decide which machine? And the first thing I say, Number one, do you have one machine that you're more comfortable with than the others? And if that's a, yeah, yes, I do, for sure. But more importantly to me than that is, could you get comfortable with the machine that you have that has the biggest throat space? Because that's your biggest, that's the biggest thing we want is good throat space. So if you could get comfortable with your machine that has the largest throat space, then that's what you want to do. So. Um, you know, it's just a matter of, I do have several machines. I have more machines than probably necessary, but um, I can tell you, I love them all. They all have features that I absolutely couldn't do without, such as needle up, needle down, and a thread cutter, and those kinds of speed control. Those are things I could not do without. So those, they all have that, but they do have differences in some of the other features. Now, I love them all for free motion. I don't, or template quilting, free motion, whatever. I don't have any, you know, problems with any of that. When it comes to some of the other things, I have one machine that has a particular foot that when I'm, for example, making mask, I love that foot because it just is so easy to do the top stitching that I do to make the mask uh, more comfortable to wear. And so there's just little things like that that, you know, make it a purchase, you know, the reason I might have purchased that machine, I wouldn't purchase the machine for one foot, but overall that is something to consider. Now what I'm going to show you right here is I have taken this out from there to there. I'm going to pull this thread to the back and tie it. But these stitches here were made with like half of a thread. So I'm going to turn this over where there's a full thread and get a hold of it and pull it out because that front thread is very, very weak. Now I'm going to give you a warning. If your machine tends to have lubrication in some ways right here, watch it when you're doing this so that you don't get lubrication on your fabric. And I will tell you, I showed a tool a couple weeks ago and I actually put a post up on it and I should put that up again. I found a place that has it. They're out of New York and I can't remember what it is now, but it's a tool that I used. You saw how easy I pulled it out. It's this one here. This one was made by Ginger, but Ginger doesn't any longer make it, but it's a very sharp razor like on either side of this. So when you pull it together, it's great for pulling out those threads or it's great for pulling out embroidery stitches. And then of course, I've got a really sharp point here that if I need to get under some stitches, I can do that also. Now, I know most of you like to see me have, I'm not gonna say problems, I'm gonna say have the same thing that you do, difficulties, and I'm showing you how to finish those up. So right here, I have my two threads you can see they're, join, or they're one stitch apart there. I'm going to give them a simple tie. I only pull them back as far as I need to have this extra thread. And I'm gonna give this the, probably a third one here since there's only two threads. I'm gonna use my cinch needle and this is not very long. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna go right where I want that to go into and I'm gonna push it through and then I'm gonna pull my tails around and put them into the needle. Are we on the screen there? Yes. Okay. And I'm just gonna tell you this because um, Judy wants to know, she didn't understand how you got your thread under your foot. 
when you were showing that at the very, very beginning. So when we get ready, we're right. gonna, I'm going to take the camera and zoom in and so we can see that. So you guys can see me pulling this right here, and nobody's going to be the wiser that I started and stopped that. And I'm just using my seam ripper there as a cutter to get that. But sometimes you need to put your needle in first and then pull that back. So right here's where we are. So now my thread didn't have a happy day there, so I need to re-thread it past where the shredding was. That threaded the needle. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise up my foot. And what I was talking about was putting it down in this hole here. And when I put it down in there, I'm just pulling this to the side so I can get a hold of it so that I can pull that through. That's all I was talking about there. Hopefully that answered the question. So now I need to be in a very specific spot to start again. And so I'm just very carefully getting this before I even get my template. I'm putting my needle down, putting it up. My thread is long enough because I cut it so I can pull that out. And I want to make sure that I get that needle right back down in that spot. So now we're ready to go again. So I'm going to line up that blue line. Can you see there? No one's going to know the difference. Now, in case you forgot what we were doing, we're alternating templates. So now I want to make sure I've got everything laid flat. I'm taking out this straight pen and we use the blue line again because I'm matching up my colors because that was my intention. Well, 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 happy day. It broke again. So Liz actually asked the question, this is a perfect time for it, why does thread shred? Well, it usually means the needle is going bad. So since that has shredded twice, I just put in a new needle, but I'm going to put in one again. Now, the other reason for this can be that it is not... We had no trouble to begin with, but it can be that it's not happy with the um, fusible. And so that could be part of it, but I'm going to put in a new needle because I give it one chance. How often do you encourage them to change their needle? Well, we usually say... It depends on how intense your sewing is. If we're just talking about a project, I would probably change it if the project's got a little bit of sewing in it, like maybe, I don't know, seven to eight hours. I would change it every project because the price of a needle is not that expensive to have issues. And the reason it shreds is because in the eye of the needle, the top side of the eye is where all of the action is. The thread is coming down. It's going down the front of the needle in what we call the scarf. And then it takes a hard right turn, right angle turn. And so it is actually abrading that metal and that metal gets sharp. And the next thing you know, it is actually cutting off the outer layer of your thread. So that's a great question. Hopefully that answered um, what you might be thinking there, but it truly is something that most people don't realize that the, all the action when you're stitching is in the eye of the needle. The point just goes through and makes a way for it. So Judy has clarified she actually wants to see you do the flossing. Okay. So whenever we get that, we'll... Sure. It'll happen every single time, so we'll do it. 
All right, so I've tied that. Remember I said when my threads are short like this, I'm just gonna take my needle where I want it to be, get it started, and then put it in that cinch needle, the side threader. I just love having this so it's threaded so easily. I don't feel so bad when all of this little interruption like this happens because it's so easy to remedy. I just give it a little tug, cut that off. All right, repeat the process. New needle, needle down in that spot, needle up, and now I'm gonna floss this, Judy. So I'm lifting this foot up, and all I do is pull my needle thread out around my finger and then underneath and pull my thread out. Okay, so now I've got the bobbin thread up and I've got the top thread together with that. I'm putting my needle back down in the spot where it needs to go and getting my template again. Lining things up. And then I'm gonna rotate this and line this up. I'm gonna take the pen out of this corner and make sure this fabric is back. You mean laying flat and Laying everything. flat, yes. And I'm gonna take this and you can see that I'm a little bit, just a smidge. Actually, it's not, it's pretty perfect there. That didn't sound good. I can tell you that and I'm not sure why because my thread is not shredded. Woo, it was just a noise. All right, that kind of scared me there. We're gonna take this pin out and we're gonna take this template. So this is why it was important for us to use the same blue colors. lining up easier well anytime when you are marking your templates anytime when you're doing something that you can give yourself an easy way to follow you want to do that all right we're almost back there now oh I turned too far we'll go like this take this pin out blue line and this one is a little bit off, but we'll be fine. Now, those of you that have been with me know my secret on turning my foot control around to the back and setting my speed to medium. What I'm trying to do here is, it seemed like my thread was breaking when I was going off into that upper left quadrant. So I am moving my fabric so it doesn't go in that angle as much. Not that that was the problem, because remember, we changed our needle, so that should have helped us right there. So the whole idea of when you're doing template quilting is to, after you've designed it, sit down and look at your pathways. You know, how are my pathways working here? Could I do some joining? Because like what Megan said is when she designed this, she did not really plan for this to be continuous. It just ended up happening. And look right here. I don't have a spacing, get, there it is, but I bet we're pretty darn close. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, that's pretty close. And so that means we have traveled around there. We've kept our templates held in the right place and we have made it around that path. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I know I'm finished there. So I'm gonna raise my foot, raise my needle, come back and get a hold of that thread by pulling up that bobbin thread. So are we again doing flossing? Are you just Not doing... at this point, okay. that's at a start. You only floss at the start. But what I'm doing here is I'm getting a hold of my thread and the one I cut, because it's the same thread, I don't know that you can see that, but I'll get, I'll get something so my finger's not in the way there. The one I cut is the one that still has the pull on it. So see, this one still has the pull on it. That means it's the one that's the bobbin thread. And you'll notice here, after I cut my top thread, this is the bobbin thread, but watch when I pull this away. It goes back down underneath and leaves me just those threads all on the top. Now, if I was just sitting here in my sewing room, I would go back and I would bury all of these right now. But they're not really in my way to show you what we're doing, so I'm not gonna be burying those. But I do need to look here at my directions. We've completed that, correct, Megan? Yep. And now we're gonna start in a corner with the pink. I don't know if it's the large, oh, the, it's only one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another arc and these are all going to be independent. So in other words, we're going to be starting and stopping, starting and stopping in all four corners. So I'm so excited for Gwen. She said that the only quilting she's done so far is stitching in the ditch. So this is exciting. Oh, so well, I'm good. excited for her. Well, you just may be interested in one of the Sashley tools if you're doing stitch in the ditch, because you can do that with ruler work and it has just a little channel for you to follow. And it's, it's called the Sashley. I almost pulled it out for today just to show you, but I didn't. So this is the one coming from the bobbin. So I've got, well, that didn't make sense. I'm pulling it up to start, Donnell. I'm thinking of the end. So Cindy wants to know, since we changed the needle, what type of needle do you use? Well, on this on the, the Janome's, I use what is called the purple needle because that is a 90 top stitch. I'm using 40 weight thread, and I, I normally use a 90 top stitch with my 40 weight thread. So the purple needle is the one I use. And it must have been at least part of the problem because it has worked. Oh, now I'm gonna the, go find some wood to knock on. What are you talking about? Oh, stop it. <laughs> So I'm gonna turn this, like I said, I'm turning it only to keep my machine going in that direction. And you wanna make sure that you've got your thread, on. oh, it did. We don't wanna knock on wood too soon. Oh boy. While you're doing that, Sandra wants to know what the pink and blue arrows are. I don't They're know ruler you... stickers. Those are ruler stickers. And they are available on, um, from your local quilt dealer, quilt uh, store. And if you can't find them there, just get in touch with us and we'll help you find them, okay? Those are not something that um, so Steady sells, so that's why they're not on there. So I just need to get this back far enough. Just give me a second, ask away. Let me talk about, since nobody's asking any questions right now, let me talk about why we use this color thread. We thought about using a thread that exactly matches the front. And Megan, if you wanna get that template quilting behind me there, we can show that while I'm doing this, the difference. But if I had done that, you would have not been able to see my quilting. But this is one here that it matches, so when you cut out, you're not able to see, you really don't see the stitches. Now underneath, she's gonna show you on the same design, same fabrics, where we made it so that you could actually see the stitches. So it's totally up to you, um, but I knew on this one when I was, was, when I was going to be showing you how to do it, I wanted you to be able to see it, so that's why I have a thread that actually blends with the top but it looks very good with our first peaker fabric, so it's gonna be easy to use.
So I've definitely shown you how to get out of your messes today. Well, and that's what Claudine says, is that the biggest lesson that she's learned from you is patience. Well, yeah, it takes a lot of patience. And sometimes it's patience with things that you have no control of. And it's not like you can actually talk to the whatever you're doing. Oh, you can talk to it. It won't answer back. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right underneath here. So Claudine, you should probably know I taught middle school home ec. So you have to have patience. So since we're still working on this, Patsy asked a question. When she's doing ruler quilting on her M7, she's had that clunking noise as well. Any ideas what could be going on? After I get finished, I will be taking out my hook and putting a tiny bit of lubricant on it. And Megan, if you can get it real fast, I'll do it right now. It's right in there. So this is probably not something Janome would tell you to do, but I'll do it so that you can see why, what I would think is gonna be helpful. In this case, I go to the lock and I lock it and I raise that piece up. So this comes up by itself. This is gonna come out and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my cleaning brush. I did this a couple weeks ago on screen, not that I haven't done it since then. But I'm cleaning that out. Give it a little... Ooh, I saw a fuzz leaf. Yeah. And I'm putting tri-flow, just one dot on each side on that ridge. And I had some people get all antsy because they have been told not to do that. Rest assured, I've repaired machines for 37 years, and this is not hurting anything. It helps to hold this piece down into that edge there. And so I just want to make sure that I get my pieces back in place and get my machine threaded back correctly. I'm kind of glad you asked because it will make a huge difference. I do this on my Viking also. All right, so I've got this back. I've got it, let's make sure I've got it tied in the same place, yep. And so what I'm gonna do is give this a shot and we are going to put the foot down and I'll be flossing again right here. Oops, gotta thread that needle. So Nancy asked, what's Triflo? That's just an oil, right? It's, yeah, you don't oil? wanna use something like WD-40. Triflo is a sewing machine lubricant. Well, it's used for a lot of things. Your husband might even have some. Your, you might have some in your, I shouldn't say that like that because my husband would have to say, well, my wife has some. <laughs> so it's not like that, but it is a clean, you don't want to use WD-40 or anything like that. Sewing machine oil will work also. And Kate wants to know, can you use it on a brother? We've used it on all types of machines, right? Yeah, I use it on my serger. I use it, it's a very clean lubricant, and the fact is it's a silicone type so that it doesn't gum up. It, it evaporates before it causes you a problem. So it's not gonna take your lint and hang on to it and you know cause a gummed up mess. So it's something that uh, I know works in the sergers when you're, you know, if you need to lubricate your serger. So here I go, pull my thread up, Pull up my needle, and I'm going to floss that underneath there. Now, I know you can't see it because it's short, but there it is. And so when you're needing something short, you use your curved needles, right? My curved tweezers. Tweezers, not needle. All right, same spot. Line it up. So Mary had a question. Since we're having these issues... Would, would it work to try switching directions for the next one and go from left to right? That really won't make a difference. It's a matter of, um, I mean, that would, you could try that. We can do that. We'll, we'll give it a try since she suggested it. Usually it's, it's just because it's free motion. It's got to do with this direction that I was, I was going. But yes, that might, make, that might make a huge difference. So we'll see and we'll give it a shot. So I just need to pull this out. I'm gonna cut that thread there. All right, 
so I'm gonna have to tie that later, but you can agree with me that that's not gonna show or anything like that. And we're gonna follow Mary's idea. I think it was Mary there. And we're gonna start on the right and go to the left. And if that works and it's a whole lot easier, next week, Mary, at 2 p.m. Pacific time, you're on. She's probably ready to scream at that. <laughs> A lot of them are saying that since you mentioned the tip about oiling in a previous one, they've done that and they've noticed a big difference in their machines. Perfect. Hey, yay. I love hearing that. Okay. So we are now on the pink. Am I correct, Megan? On the pink. And we are going to lower yes. the needle, raise the needle and pull up the thread. Foot down, needle down, and go, Mary, go, Mary. Liz wants to know, for the serger, do you use the same lubricant? We use TriFlow on all of the machines, right? Yeah, whenever I have any of them that I need to lubricate in any way for any purpose, I use the tri-flow. Mary, Mary, we did it. Megan, you're snickering. What's going on? Because Mary just wrote, just like Megan, just a teacher's daughter. Well, yeah. Okay. And I, I'm a teacher too, so. Okay. So I've got that thread out. We've got that corner. And it appears we've got two more to go, or maybe just one more. Nope, two. So we're going to do them all from the right. I don't know if you guys saw my scissors there. I found these today. That doesn't mean they're like brand new. It just means I had lost them. And what they are is they have a kind of a blunt end on one and a little curved tip on the other. And they're great for doing that, kind of getting the threads out like I've had to do here this today. So foot down, on the line, needle down, needle up, use your buttons if you have them. And yes, yeah, she talks to herself like this when there's nobody even here. That's correct. Because sometimes I need a correct answer. So I have to talk. All right, needle up, foot up, pull it away, pull it back, foot down, needle down and up. Oops, now we're gonna pull that out so that we've got our threads. And we've got one more to go before we go to the next. And we're almost done, you guys, with this part. I was going to say, somebody wondered if this was going to be a two-part one, and I don't, we hadn't anticipated that, but. Well, no, I think we're going to be okay. okay. I think we're going to be okay. All right, I want to know how many of you talk to yourself, so give me some love if you are one that talk to yourself when you sew. Yes. So this is our last corner here. We're on the pink one. We're coming to the corner. Okay, then once you see, do you see all this love coming? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they all okay. talk to themselves. For the same reason. Keeps us sane. All right, so I've got my threads pulled out, foot down. Now, I know some of you, you just stitch a couple stitches in place, and that's okay if you want to do that. I just like to bury my threads. It's just me. It's just the way I've always done it. Not that I won't change, but not right now. So <laughs> I'm just glad Mary encouraged me to go the other way. All Some right. of you are being a little too honest and even telling me that you're answering yourselves when okay. you talk. <laughs> well, that's fine too. There's no reason to talk if you don't answer yourself. Okay, threads. 
I want you to see where we're at so far, all that we've got done here. And now what we've got to do, which one did we just do? We just did pinks in the corner. So now what are we doing here? Pink from the center point. That's what we just did here. Okay. I think you're ready for that in the corners. Just in the corner. So it's not this one, huh? The small blue. Yeah, we're gonna do the small blue and then the rotating big blue. Okay, small blue in the corners. All right. And this so. one will connect, I believe, is what we had planned. Yep, okay. So we're gonna come over here and this one I want you to notice, this is still all loose. So we wanna make sure we get it good and flat and we're using the blue line. And I think you can see why I simply love ruler stickers. I know some of you have told me I've got you hooked on them too. So now that that's pulled out, foot down, needle in, still lined up. And we're going to the corner here. I don't think that's what we're doing, honey. Aim that you're going here, and then you're going to do the big one this okay. way. Okay. It's her design. So if I screw it up, it's my fault. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to take the now, and I switch to the large template. And I'm using the blue line. And let me get it in, because they can't see how you're lining up, and I just got to change the camera. Okay. There we go. So this one comes around like this, is that right? Yeah, it's gonna... We just made this, and now we're gonna make this line right here. So we're clear up into the center. It's yeah, coming it's clear up come there. Up All right. Yep. Looking at the real McCoy, we've got it written down in directions, but... Everything's still lined up. Oh, Gwen, this is her first time watching. Oh, Gwen. Well, I hope you've seen some basics because this is more of an advanced right here. We don't want to scare certain, you off. We don't want to scare you off. This is definitely more of an advanced design. I'm lining up this blue right here. And remember, it's not a perfect circle. It's, got, it's not an arc. Now, is that coming down there? Is that what we need? Yep. Is this our last one, Megan? I think so. This is our last one. Awesome. We're going to get to do some fun here. Of the arcs. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, it's Joyce's first time, too. All right. Yeah, Gwen, we know you're probably a little lost and anybody else who's new. So what would you encourage them to do? I want you to go back to about March the 16th on the So Steady Facebook page and watch my get starting if this is your very first time. This here is giving encouragement to you guys to number one, start using your templates for designing, but even more importantly than that, I'm wanting to show you how we would do this so that you can join me for a class because this will be in the university as a class. Now, do I have the right template, Megan, in yes, the right you do. place? Pays to have the person who designed it right beside you. Did you say like March 15th? I'm going to put it in the comments. Was it about the Well, 15th? I can't remember when it actually aired. I want to say it was Tuesday after the shutdown. Oh, well, that so. was the 17th. That was... Okay, then that would probably be the date. So it's right in. We have a whole bunch, and we have done lives almost every day for the first two or three months of shutdown. Now what I'm gonna do here is stop and get my thread out from underneath there because I don't want to have that showing.
So the interesting part of designing, sometimes you design with a purpose in mind. In other words, like a couple of weeks ago, somebody said, you know, I've got this template and I want to, I, I have this, um, oh, it would have been a stencil and I want to do something like that. Then you are using your templates to try and emulate a design. But you can also just take some templates and start playing. We had no idea what she was gonna end up when she was doing these. And so she just started playing with them. And so it makes it versatile in the fact that you can do both different, I mean, both different uh, or both styles of designing. And I'll also say when I was doing it, I only did a 12 inch square and made a design and then you encouraged me to make some other so I could see what it would look like all together. And yeah, my design said, completely changed. Yeah, the design changed because we were putting four together in that case. When we're done with this, Myrna wants to know, this is gonna be a wall hanging, right? I will probably use, it could be a wall hanging. I will definitely use it either as a wall hanging or as a table mat. It'll be about 30 inches square when I actually finish this. So now I need my small template. So what I'll do is this will be kind of a two session class because what we'll do is we'll get this and get you started on it. And then I'll get this so that the, the cutouts are done and we'll come back next week and we'll do some designing so that you can see what else you could do with these templates. That would just make it so that so some of you that ask, you know, we should do some designing, that will meet that um, request too. So that way we will get more because this is not done enough or completed enough for me to show you how to do the borders. So I'll have to do a little bit of work before I can show you the borders on this. So for some of our newbies, you had mentioned the university and uh, Lorraine says, what is that? Okay, if you go to the So Steady website, in other words, www.sosteady.com, there is what's called the university. There are free classes in there, and there are also classes that you pay to take. And so it's awesome. I got to measure here just real quick, you guys, because I'm back to the beginning. Um, it's an awesome way to have one-on-one, -on -one, so to speak, because what you can do is set your phone or your iPad up by your sewing machine, and you can watch the class and stop it and do the work and then go back and you know, start it again. Or you can even you know, watch it all once and then go back and do it again because once you've paid for the class, it's yours to rewatch and rewatch. So the university is something where all of the different um, educators, I shouldn't say all, but many of the educators have put up classes. And I'm trying to get some more up there because I've spent so much time getting ready for the Saturdays that I haven't done as much that way and I want to get more up there because I've got all of these fun projects to do and um, we want to be able to have fun with doing those projects because we can show you techniques all the time but you know if you don't have a project sometimes the project is what you're wanting to do. So Vivian wanted to know why were you not cutting the thread for that last round? It's because we were trying to connect them all right? You want to try and connect as many um, lines as possible so that you don't have as much to bury. Right, right, exactly. So th since that was one that I could continue on, I didn't cut them. I just kept going so I don't have as many to starts and stops. So we got one more. One First, more round. Well, it's not a round. We got to do this here in this in the center point with just the with just the pink, I believe, just here in all the middles. So that gets cut because you got this large one. We gotta do this second one now. Okay. We haven't made this yet. Oh, okay, I see, I see. All right. 
So what we're gonna do now, this is the last one, it will be a start and a stop. So I'll start and stop four different times because what I'm gonna do is the pink lined up here, coming from one side and circling, I shouldn't say circling, but making its way to the other side. So it's like a half circle is what I'm gonna say. You do have stable tape on there, right? Absolutely. Okay, because it, it looks different. Joanne says that it looks like we're not using it, but actually, Joanne, it is. It's here. It's here. Let me, Wait, can you see it there? Go up a little. Yeah, there it is. So it's there. We love it. We use it on everything. I couldn't use, I couldn't, oops. I couldn't do this without stable tape. So Rhonda wants to know, she doesn't have these um, templates, but she's got the circles on quilts rulers. Could she make the same design? No, you could not make the same design, but you can make a similar design. All right, you could, you could play with it and you know draw it out and see what works for you, but they're, they're gonna be a little bit different. But you could come up with something, that's for certain. Now here's what I was saying, that's one time around there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you could tie this off with not having to deal with actually stitching. So on this, I know that I'm gonna add my border right there. So I could just go side to side a few stitches and then go ahead and cut my threads. Okay, because that's gonna get stitched in again. So that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of these. Uh, I've got to think. I'm going this way. Uh-oh, I gave you guys a little swing, so I apologize. So we're going to start here. And I cut that last one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down. Needle down. Needle up because I just can't bring myself to do that stitching. I can do it on the end, but I just can't bring myself to do it at the beginning. So I'm sorry. So sorry. Now I don't wanna run over this thread, so I'm carefully going to pull it underneath. I think we're gonna like this color of thread, Megan. Too late now if we don't, right? <laughs> no sec. I bet somebody out there would be glad to take it. All right, line up with the pink. There it is. It wouldn't hurt to put another arrow over here and make it easier. Yeah. So we did have a question on when you are designing, how do you uh, um, account for the fourth of an inch of the foot? with my spacing or stitching line disc. So the stitching line discs look like this. These are little stitching line discs. And they are different sizes depending on your um, marking, utensil. marking utensil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get one of these out. I'm gonna hand it to Megan. I'm gonna have her bring over here a piece of the paper so we can show you. So we just need a plain sheet for what we're doing here. I have a tablet that I've designed that's 12 inches square. And half of the tablet, you can see I've done some drawings there. Half of the tablet is lined for an eight point crosshair grid. This is one that we're gonna be doing probably in a couple of weeks. It's gonna, when we get finished with it, look like a sunflower. But uh, the half of the tablet is just plain paper. And so when Megan was designing with this, this is way you know too uh, big here for me, but I'm gonna move it out here. So if we were designing with this, I would need to add my quarter of an inch. So I actually have that little piece and my pencil fits down in it so I can just draw right around there. 
so that I have added my quarter of an inch. So stitching line discs are on that shopping cart if you want to get some of those. And for those of you that might not have heard us in the very beginning, on the handout up at the top, I can't remember what the wording is. I think it says add to cart. There's a little shopping cart. And while you're on your phone or your computer or your iPad or whatever, you can actually add items to your shopping cart. So hopefully that answers that question. And that we'll do more of that next week, you said, when we do like part two with right. designing. So if, if we do some designing next week, get your stitching line disc so that you can be ready to play with us with whatever templates we'll probably be playing with. Maybe some of these, maybe some others. I'm trying to see which way it's right here. I think I need to go. Yes, Peggy, she wants us to um, leave a couple layers that we don't cut this week so that she, cause she's never seen it done. I'm gonna so. cut right now. So before we leave today, you'll get to see that, but I'll leave a few, maybe. All right, so I'm coming over here, putting the foot down, needle down, needle up, floss underneath there, pull out that thread, foot back down, needle back down, make sure I'm lined up. This is where I'm just going to end that seam allow or seam line. I finish that off and I'll be able to cut the threads on the back. And I do believe this is the last one. So I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to line up on my pink line. Needle down, needle up, foot up, and floss. Foot down, needle down. Sorry, my head just ran into the Camera. Oh, this makes me excited. Judy's just told a friend this morning that she would never try a wedding ring design, but now maybe she will. You just never know. I'm at the edge, so I'm going to go back and forth. In that seam allowance. Those did we tell threads. them why we do that? I think we did. Oh, okay. So now I could take the time and do all of these. All I'm going to do is cut them so they're at a manageable distance or length, distance, length, so that I can go back and deal with them and get the length out of there. And then what we're going to do is we are going to practice some safe template practices. So in other words, we want to make sure we don't do something wrong. Whew, almost thought I had put that right underneath there. Well, I guess we can. Megan's pointing out the fact that I have some designs I need to stitch. So, Or do you want to do those next week? Nope, I can do them right now. I won't do all of them, but I'll do some of them. So what we're going to do is we are going to use our spinning wheels 36 in these areas. And so what I'm going to do is I need to mark my lines. I've got these lines and that, so it's just this one and this one. I 
I won't do all of these because we can always come back and do these. But if you've not seen it, the Spinning Wheels 36 is the one that is in your sampler set one. Now, when you mark this one, make sure you just get these two lines lined up and your center point is right on the corner. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Some of, the, some of our newbies ask, what do they start with? What, what would be a good pack of oh, um, templates to start with? Okay. If you're new and you're totally new to this, the best and most economical is on that page that you click on Add to Cart, you're going to get the ruler work kit because right now that ruler work kit is $175 but it has over $270 worth of information. You're actually getting some online classes such as Ruler Work 101 with that purchase. So your best purchase is to do that and then you'll get the links for those classes. So the Ruler Work 101, or excuse me, the, the Ruler Work Kit that's on that link being 175 is an awesome kit because if you look at that, Megan, I don't know where my handout is from my event that I did yesterday, but it has my ruler work kit on it. So it, if you want to find that stack of information, then I can show them what it includes. And then how would they know, like, I know that Janome has its own set is there does it matter for new you would you would not need that because when you buy a ruler work kit one of the things says that you are going to fill out is what machine and what model it is so it doesn't matter what machine you have this is that ruler work kit i'll put it down here i think you can see it all then and you can see it says over $270 value. So let me just point out right here at the bottom, this is the crosshair grid that I just used to draw these lines. That is $35 by itself. This is the sampler set of templates. And that's what I would be showing you how to use in that basic class that we said that was back on like March 17th or something like that. And you're just going to go back and it'll say, let's get started with ruler work. And it's a, I, I hate to say it this way because it's patting myself on the back, but it's going to get you started in the right way. And I think there's others on there that would agree with that so they can maybe chime in. It's going to tell you all about the marking tools. It's going to tell you how to get your foot on. It's just going to tell you all that stuff. But these are the six templates that are in the sampler set. And then there's your spacing gauge. Sampler set 65. Spacing gauge, I believe, is 8. The foot's 28. This template right here is 20. Plus, you're getting all of the other things that I talked about. You're going to get this book right here. And this is the crosshair rulers book. And this is going to teach you how to use your crosshair rulers. And then you can also, with that, you are going to get all of this. So you notice here it says for a limited time only, you're going to get these online classes as a bonus. And so you're going to have the Ruler Work 101, the Nine Block Sampler. There's all of that on there. And the other book that I would encourage you to get, and it's probably not on that list, but this is kind of like your first grade reader. And this is what's called Janet Collins from the first stitch to the last. And you can see all of those designs that are on there. There's 45 different designs done with those templates. And it shows you how to do all of those. So if you're just getting started with this, I can tell you that's the way you want to go to get started. Because there's a lot of different things to learn and to, to contemplate, but you want to get started with the basics in the correct way. So they want to see the templates. Is that what you're doing? No, I was just, did you already have it I out? I already have my template oh, out. Okay. Don't know where it's at, but I got it out. There it is. So yes, great question. And the design I'm going to do right now is one of those designs that you would learn right off the bat. And it's one that it's a very basic design. And so normally we would put our thumbtack up through the middle there. But since that is so thick, what I have done is I've taken my thumbtack and I have actually put it up through my tape. 
and I am going to just cut this down because I want that right dead center and I don't want to sew through this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be using that as my pivot point. So this is a great basics to get started here. So I've got that on there and I'm gonna be lining this line up and I'm going to be stitching and then I'll move it to the next line and stitch. So basically what we have here, you guys, is Spirograph for quilters. So without further ado, let's just give that a shot. I've got it centered here. I know that my, you can see right down in here. Whoa, no, I'm not. Let me cut off just a little bit more. And some of you have thought, oh, I never even thought of putting it on tape. It works very well when you've got really thick fabric so that you don't have, um, have to come up through all of that. But I've got a little bit too much on this side and that side. So what I wanna do is I wanna cut that and this was the fun part with the designing because I just did all of the, what we just done. And once we put it together, we realized we had these empty spaces. Empty spaces. So we want to put this on there just so that we can draw around that. And I'm going to set this back on. I have stable tape, as you can see. There's a line up here. I don't know that you can see that, but it's lined up right there. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go right to that spot, needle down, needle up. And I'm gonna pull up my thread, set my foot back down. And now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm sewing from the A on that template around to the B. Don't pay attention to that arrow. The B is right down here. That's a different design. And so now when I rotate to the next line, I'm sitting that right on that line. There's a line coming through here. I'm now at A and I'm going to go again. And if this is your first time I don't know if the handouts are on there, but I have two handouts I would be more than happy to send to you. Just shoot me an email. I think it's right on the handout for today's class and say, hey, I watched your class and I would love to have the beginner handouts and I'll send you those two handouts. And since you mentioned the handout, this is what today's looks like. And I'm only bringing it on because some want to know where to find the, um, the link to the kit. How do they find that link? They just It's right here. When this just, is on your computer, you click on that. On your phone or your computer, if you click on that, that'll all be linked on there for you to find that kit. And I will tell you, and I think there's probably at least 100 other people out there right now that'll tell you, this is totally different than free motion quilting. This is guided. It's so much more exacting. And it's very relaxing. And I would have never said that, partly because I never succeeded in free motion. So I really enjoy this. I love to do it. It's relaxing, as I said. And I love the versatility of our templates. Um, it's, just, it's just a lot of fun. So what I'm going to do here is I raise that up. You can see my design here. I've got to get my threads up through there. I'll move this out of the way so that you can see what our design looks like. These lines are going to iron off, and I teach that in the beginner class that you, I told you is on there, and it's for free. So I've got to pull my thread up again. You want them to send you an email, right? They send me an email, gonna, and I'll send you those beginner handouts. I'm going to add it because some of them are replying on here. I'm going to send her the email. Just a second, everybody. It's on the handout too. My email's on the handout. So now what I'm gonna do, that's the only full one that we need to do. It's the only big space, but I'm gonna come down here in the corner and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm just gonna tape my tack right in the corner. That should be a song, tape my tack. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this down. And in this case, none of this is gonna show. So I'm gonna start right out there. 
So I wanna make sure I've got all of my layers flat. And on this one, I'm gonna come a little bit away. Can they see that, Megan, that I'm a little bit away from there? I think so. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my needle down and I'm gonna to stitch to that point, which will be my locking stitch. And that way I won't have to worry with pulling up my threads. And I'm only coming to B, not back to the line. So let me turn this so you can see it. I'm gonna rotate this again to the line. Rotate one more time. And I'm gonna stop here, and I'm just simply gonna stitch back on that line, just cut that, and then cut that off. Now, I've got a little extra thread right there. I will go to the back side, and I will pull that down so you won't even see that. But that's just that little design that we're doing in the corner. So we did have a question. Um, you had that tack on top. Would, wouldn't that be, the question was, would that be a good use for long armors as well to put the tack if, if, on top? Yes, yes, very good, yes. And anytime you, you can use bigger pieces of tape except it's coming into my design. So that's why I've got such a small area there. But we wanna make sure it's right in where that intersection is. And now this one, that's the one in the corner. This one over here is done the same way, except it's a little bit bigger because it's actually half a design. So I'm gonna do it this way, hoping that they can see this. I'm gonna put my needle down in the line and I'm just gonna stitch right up to that point and that will secure my thread. So I'll be able to cut that off. I stitch to B, not clear back to the line. And then I rotate it so that that line lines up and I stitch around. Mary noticed your tape and how well it sticks. What is the tape that you're using? What I'm using is RNK Embroidery Perfection Tape. And Mary, thank you for noticing that because it does work. I can tell you the tape Painter's tape, washi tape, scotch tape, none of that really works. And this is the RNK perfection tape that they use for when they're doing in the hoop embroidery and they need to tape down a zipper or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna go back in that seam and cut that thread. Now I've got three more of these to do and three more of those corners to do but I'm not gonna take your time doing those because the excitement is about to happen. Woohoo! This is where we're gonna cut this out. So what we want to do to make sure we don't do anything and screw anything up is we're going to take our chalk and that's because the chalk irons off easily as does the marker. So we'll just use our purple marker wherever it's gotten to. I just used it. Well, we'll do green. All right. Which somebody asked, what markers were you using? So can you... I'm using the Frixon markers. They're not the pens. You want the markers that have the felt tip on the end. And I, the thing you need to remember is I'm assuming that you've watched that video that some of you haven't. We put spray starch on this, and I use the Best Press or I use the Starch Savvy by um, uh, June Taylor. And... What that does is it puts a barrier on your fabric so it doesn't go right down in there. So, Megan, if you want to tease the iron a minute over there so it heats up, I'm going, to have, I'm going to have her show you how this, we don't have our little mini iron on today, and so this way she can show you how that easily irons off. But I need to look at the actual picture, and I can tell you this is going to get cut. This is going to get cut. This is going to get cut, and that's going to get cut. And those are going to go deep because they're going to the second layer. The others that are like that that get cut is this one and this one. 
and this one, and this one. And so now I've marked those. Now I'm gonna let her have it for just a second because it only takes a second, only do the middle, honey. And then I'm gonna get a different colored marker because that's the way I will know which ones get one layer cut and which ones get two layers cut. The ones I just mark are all the ones that get two layers. And then the rest of them, which is a lot, that's a lot of them. If you look at your if you look at your picture there on your handout, there's a lot there. But you can see how easily this pressed out in the center and how much, you know, more exciting. You only press this, right? Yeah, it's the only thing I press out. Cuz otherwise we just fused everything. Okay. So, I just wanted you to see how that works. Now, what's going to get cut out with with the top layer? This one, this one, this one, and this one. So I'm just gonna take the time and do two sides here so that you can see. And the other that's gonna get cut out is this space here, and this space here, and this one here, and this one, okay? So over here, it's here, and here, and here, and here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start doing our cutting. Now the scissors that I use for the cutting are the Snippy scissors. They look like this. They're very pointed and they are a tweezer type scissor. And so what you want to do is you want to have a good sharp point here and your seam ripper needs to be more than $1.98 on a sale rack or well on a sale I shouldn't say you might get one there but this needs to be super sharp in here because what we're going to do is we are going to reach underneath here and we are going to get just one layer okay so I'm just making sure I've got one layer of fabric and I'm just going to make a slice and you can see in there and so what I would do is I would go ahead and I'd slice that one I would come over here and I'm taking time to make sure that I've only got one layer and I slice that. Some of you are going, oh my gosh, she's scaring me to death. You're gonna get one layer and slice that. And now I'm gonna come back down here and I want you to see how easy this is to tweeze up against that stitching. I need to go just a smidge more. And what says, these are your snippies? The Snippies tweezers, yes. And they are made by several different companies, but I will tell you that the Snippies are what you want to use. I tried to use bigger scissors like this one right here. This is an embroidery scissor. It's way too big. It's too hard to get in there. That's what was recommended to me. But you're gonna love these little snippies because like right here, I'm just getting right close to those threads. Don't snip your threads. And I'm just tweezing it. Now you're not gonna get clear back into that corner and you don't want to. I'm gonna come back this way and I'm coming right around this direction. Cause you're gonna leave, oh, like an eighth of an inch. Now you're gonna do this on a big table where you can turn it whichever way you need to. I like to, since I'm right-handed, I like to stay so that my scissors are on the left side of the line. And for those of you that have not, you know, been sewing for a number of years, some of those techniques may not, you know, be something that you've done before. But if you stay on the left side of the line, you will do better at your cutting. Now, like I said, I'm not going to get clear down in there. So that's what I've got there. So I've got this one to cut out. So I'm going to come over here and I just need to get into a corner. Again, my scissors are on the left side of that line.
You are making a few of them nervous. They're... Oh, don't be nervous. I actually love doing this, but it's I'm kind of in an awkward seating. And we would not recommend this as a first-time project for our newbies, right? No, 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 no. Not even doing the cutting out or anything. No, that's, that's a little bit more advanced. Get used to your template quilting. Okay, so I've got this. And so you can see when you're doing this, if I had this thread that exactly matched my backing, I would never see any of that. All you'd see was this part. Now, because I want you to see how to do the next part, I'm gonna come up to this section right here, and I'm going to get underneath one layer and give it a cut. And then I'm gonna get underneath the second layer. Actually, I'm just gonna cut this one layer at a time. So this layer has gotta be the pretty one. And I mean that by the fact that it's gonna be what shows. And obviously, I didn't take the time to show you underneath there, but there's our heat and bond. And that's why I kind of panicked when I had her iron that off because if she got out into this area, we weren't gonna have anything to be able to cut because it would have been fused down. And I will tell you, once you get going on this, you're gonna say the same thing I did. I wish I had started doing all of this sooner because it is so fun to do. So Rhonda asked the question, when washed out, does this fray where you've cut? Nope, that's why the heat and bond's there. It will not. And you wanna make sure you use heat and bond light or similar. You don't want the heavy stuff. Now this is the one that I cut another layer out so I wanna make sure that I get under just one layer and I can tell that I'm only under one layer. And this is where I put my fusible. Remember I showed you I put it on the back? So now, honey, I'm gonna to have to get a little closer to this. Okay, so. I'll come this direction. So I'm just cutting right up against that, what I already cut the top layer out. And if you've forgotten what we were doing, the third color is now showing. So that's what we have for our third color. So you have two layers. This one we cut out one, this one we cut out two. And that's where these X's are gonna help us to know which layers get cut out. So we're gonna go over here now to this lower layer. Karen's right, it's like unwrapping a gift. Right, now you're gonna be confused by this right here. I'm gonna cut up close to this, but this is not stitched, but it will be stitched when we put in our border. So this is one that only gets, well, this one gets two. Well, I didn't get close enough on that one. This is gonna get recut after it's stitched, so that's why I'm leaving a little bit of extra there. So this is a lot like reverse applique. Need to cut a second layer out, sharp seam ripper there. And when I do this, I'm just checking to make sure that I'm not down to the batting because you know a seam ripper in batting would feel a whole lot different than scraping across a piece of fabric. So 
So you can see why I said I come back next week and I will show you how we're going to do the borders and how we can use those templates in other ways, plus do a little bit of designing. So it might be a little bit of a hodgepodge. But there's our layer there. So hopefully you have learned a few tricks along the way and you've seen that even people who do this all the time have times when their thread breaks. I've got a lot of threads to tie here. So I appreciate you joining me this week. And again, have a great weekend, a great week. We'll see you next Saturday. Send me your comments and your questions because I always go back through if there's anything I need to answer. Appreciate you joining me. See you next time. Bye for now. Bye.